Hey everybody and uh, welcome back to 31 Days of Indie Horror. I'm your host, Jonathan Mooney. I'm here with James L. Edwards. How are you, Jonathan? Good. How are you? Doing real good. Uh, glad to glad to be back. Yeah, you are back. Like, um, not just on one of my podcasts or one of my video guests. You've done 31 Days of Indie Horror, like I think almost every season. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not the first season, but like mm-hmm. Every yeah. season after that, I think two and three and now four. So mm. there you go. Um, yeah. And usually, okay. So the first one, you're like, oh, that was terrible. Blah, 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 you know, right. So the second one, you wanted a movie that you, you know, that you already were going to be watching or something. Right. Like that, that you had sort of already picked. Um, and then this time I got to pick again. So this, next time, yeah, you get next, to, time. next time you get to pick. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, so we're back. And we're going to be talking about Final Summer, which, uh, once again, this is just an, uh, if you've been watching the show, you know that I just basically randomly pick a movie off of Tubi. There is no, there is no, oh man, I think James is going to love this or hate this. This is no, any of that. It's just like, you know, this looks like a horror movie. Let me pick this. And um, yeah, it looked like a horror movie. It looked like every Friday the 13th movie I've ever seen, you know, and and whatnot. What mm-hmm. do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it definitely was one of those, uh, ones where I think they were trying to capture the, uh, it tried to be a love song to, uh, to Friday the 13th. I don't think they quite made it. I, I think it was, I, I think it was a great, uh, great love song to some of the lower tier slashers of that time. But, uh, but yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. It's called Final Summer and it had a little bit of a, it reminded me a little of final girls i don't know if you ever saw that movie yeah i love final girls yeah i could definitely see that yeah Yeah, so i think they watched that movie this is my opinion so Mm -hmm. it might not even be right right like whatever but i think like they watched that movie saw all the tropes and different things that they sort of point out in that movie uh for all the camp stuff and then just threw it into this movie because like literally even to the point where uh, there was that great like you know part where they're like oh slow motion and the guy's like flying down and everything i was like oh my god they're doing like a little bit of slow motion here and stuff where they were coming around and i was just like it just seems like this is this is that but then again it also they the people who made this the filmmakers who made this obviously are big fans of uh like the camp slasher movies oh absolutely yeah i mean i uh, i mean i know what was it the Writer, director, slash cinematographer, uh, uh, was it uh, John Ilsberg, I believe mm-hmm. it was? Um, I wasn't familiar with his work at all when you had suggested the movie. I, I did actually do a little bit of research on him. Right. To me, like, he mostly worked as a cinematographer. But, uh, but yeah, you could definitely see he, uh, um, that, uh, he, uh, he had a true love for the, uh, for the 80s slasher. Well, he did have Tom Matthews. That's in true. The movie, so like, obviously, you don't put Tom Matthews in a, uh, you know, in a slasher movie without it obviously being a nod to Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, exactly. Now yeah. that bring up a good point. Um, aside from Tom Matthews, were you familiar with any of the other actors or actresses in Bishop the film? Stevens? I I'm friends with him on Facebook, and okay. I've chatted with him a few times. He's a really good guy. He's uh like very very professional. Like nice. won't sign on to a project unless it's pretty much ready to go and and everything like that. And just a really yeah. good professional dude. The chance to look him up. Yeah, he's uh he's one of the deputies. He's a uh deputy. He's not the de- there's two deputies. There's the one deputy who uh you know gets killed by the guy. You know when he just is back behind that. So we did a we did another movie. Um, I don't know if it's before or after we post this, but whatever. There's another movie where there was a killer and there was cops that were so stupid mm-hmm. that it just drove me nuts because I'm like, why the like, cops don't aren't aren't that stupid. They're, right. they're trained to do smart things. And the only people that are stupid usually are the writers. Right. The writers. Um and so in this case a I don't think that the guy would have ever let the cop would have ever let the guy get the, the upper hand on him. Right. He would have backed up instead of going forward and he would have pulled out his gun 
And he would have been, you know, because especially when the guy did not have his, you know, both hands up, he just had one hand. You could tell the other one was holding something, you know, or whatever. He would have backed up and got away from the guy enough where if he tried to do something, he would have shot him. And that's mm-hmm. how police usually work. But I guess the idea is if they're in this, like, sort of, sort of small town, whatever, you know, you can you can get away with anything. By the way, was what was the lake called? Like Slumber Lake or something? Oh, uh, well, I know. What was it? It was a reference to um, uh, The Last Starfighter. I'm trying to remember. What was it called? Oh, uh, give me a second. Uh, it was called uh, Camp Silver Lake. Camp Silver Lake. Was that really it? I, thought, I swear to God. Camp Silver Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh- uh, what was it? It was a uh, nod to Nick, Nick Castle's film, La- The Last Starfighter. And obviously Nick Castle played the shape in Halloween. So there's the there's six- the, the slasher reference. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Um, now, one thing, and, and I wanted to bring this up. Another thing that I saw in the trivia section was that um, the character of, or the, the picture of um, uh, uh, the painting of George Krug mm-hmm. was Tom Atkins. Did you did you notice that at I all? I did not know that. I didn't it, realize that. Hmm. Did Tom Atkins give them permission, or can they just? No, he. Uh, what was it? Apparently, he agreed to lend his image to the uh, to the character uh, uh, to the director for the. Uh... <laughs> that's funny. Hmm. That's that's cute though. Like I like I like because then Halloween three, you know. Right. So, I mean, there's there's lots of like references. <laughs> I mean. You know, maybe that's a good thing. Like, you know, you watch one of these movies. I mean, I know, um, you know, I know the guys like I'm sure you're friends with Dave Kerr mm-hmm. who's making like the bloody summer camp movies. And right. they are obvious nods to that. But my only my only difference between that and this one is like those ones are jokey and fun and silly and have have at least moments of comedy. This one right. was straight up serious. Like, I don't think there was any thing that i laughed at like mm-hmm. i don't know if there was supposed to be i think there it was supposed to all be serious yeah i I think it was pretty much played for straight yeah which is i mean which is fine if you can make it interesting enough which they did in my opinion i i'm a big slasher fan so i was i was, I was enjoyed like from the very beginning where they have the campfires sequence where they're talking about you know uh whatever you know like uh the the, the killer that's out right. there um, so I, I got a little confused. So the, the, so that was, was that five years earlier? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. The idea was five years earlier, there was, uh, there, uh, there was a killing or uh, killing of the camp. And then since then there've been accidents that it seemed to me like everybody knew who the, uh, 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 what was it, who was doing it, but nobody was really talking about it kind of thing. Well, no, cause they, okay. So they said, they knew it was, uh, we're, we're the one the one lady said we know who it is, right, right, or whatever. Then she turned out to. Oh, spoilers alert! So uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen Final Summer, go watch it on Tubi. You're, you're gonna right ruin Eddie. We're five minutes into this. You're already gonna ruin the end. Fuck, dude! I don't care. Like <laughs> that's how I do these movies. So <laughs> if if there's spoilers in every single one of my my videos, so <laughs> like you know they're uh they're gonna get it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we know who, um, cause I called it, I like, I knew she had to be involved because, right. you know, um, I won't say who it is just to... yeah, the, you've already, you've already said who it is. Come on. Okay. All right. Yeah. The, the lady runs the camp, I guess, or right. whatever, which, which goes honest, back to Friday the 13th. To be perfectly honest with you, it was not that big of a twist. And right. I guess again, <sighs> I think there were pros and cons to this movie. Um, I mean, I don't think the performances were bad. I don't think that... Uh, see, the cinematography for me was confusing because there were a lot of well-placed, well-done shots. And maybe it was just how it looked on Tubi, but did everything seem like it was quite a bit out of focus? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and I just was kind of baffled, especially from someone who, like I said, from doing my research... The guy seemed to mostly work as a cinematographer, and I just, like I said, I mean, the guy knows how to set up a shot. It just seems like maybe uh, 
I don't know if it was a bad transfer. The, I mean, the movie's what, 2023, so I can't imagine it's a bad transfer. Well, okay. So I always give independent filmmakers um, a little bit of leeway with, mm -hmm. with stuff because sometimes with Tubi, maybe something doesn't get you know, there's a there's a glitch or something happens right. and then that's what you get. So maybe a DVD or Blu-ray would look a lot cleaner and a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can't I can't. Plus, Tubi, as much as I love Tubi and I do, I absolutely do. Like I'm not knocking on Tubi. They haven't they haven't gone up to like HD yet. Everything is still, I believe, standard definition. Mm -hmm. So you're what you're watching is. If you're watching it on, like I'm watching it on a 4K television, when I watch it on a 4K television, it's it's and it's a standard definition. It's still going to look a lot sloppier than you know what uh, a uh, a movie that was probably shot in uh, 4K mm -hmm. would look like. I would imagine this was shot in a because it's so easy. To, I mean, my my phone you know shoots in 4K. There's no way you can't shoot your movie in 4K these days or whatever. Right. You know, um, so yeah, it it was, or if it was just shot in, you know, your stand, uh, whatever your HD, still mm -hmm. that's better than you know what you're probably going to get on Tubi. So, right. yeah, you know, that's the thing that just well, one of the things that disappointed me about the movie is they had this really great location and it seemed to be lost just because like i said a lot i mean even this was not from what i could tell this was not an easy film to to, to film anyway because there's a lot of uh, at night outdoor shots and those are tough those are not easy to do oh, I, they, I just found that out the other day when we were trying to shoot something outdoors and now it's gonna rain so yeah i'm like you know, like I, anybody who shoots outdoors, period, you know, there's always going to be there's going to be noises that you can't control. There's going to be uh, storms or rain, you know, rain that you can't oh, control. I'm the logistics of lighting it, lighting. you, it looks you know. And I mean, it seemed to me like this guy knew what he was doing, except realistically, like I said, everything was just kind of kind of blurry and kind of kind of uh, i don't want to say faded it just kind of it just kind of blah you know yeah and i mean there are some there are some really good shots especially during the day where mm -hmm. they show off like the lake and they show off and then the night where they show off like the moon like that shot kind of thing and right. i i enjoyed that stuff you know or whatever um there was there was a couple really cool shots mm -hmm. that i was like Oh my God! This is actually really well, you know, put Even together. Like somewhat of a budget behind it. Let's put yeah, it that. There was one shot where, like, the people were running or something, and there, and there was um, oh, the girl was running, and like there was like this like smoke like behind everything, like fog, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I was just like, that looks really cool. Like I could just look at that like a, a painting, you know, almost like right kind of thing. What it's, was like, your uh, what was your thought on the killer itself? Mm. I like the mask. I, I like, like the mask. No, no, the mask is cool. The, the killer, the killer themselves was boring. Right. Well, and unfortunately, my problem with the, my main number one problem with this movie was I. I mean, you've got a boring killer, but he's also the most interesting character in the movie. Right. Because, I'll be honest with you. You know me. I'm big on characterization. I couldn't tell you any of the characters in this movie. I mm -hmm. could. I, I just, I, I mean, obviously, I, I knew Tom Matthews' character simply because of the fact he was the sheriff and because of the fact he's Tom Matthews and I recognize him as an actor. But he had a weird name because it was like, it wasn't like Palmer, you know? It mm -hmm. was like Hamer or something, you know? like yeah, uh, Palmer. Was it Palmer? Yeah, I, something like that. And I was just like, Palmer. That's what it was. And I was like, do they mean to say Palmer? I, like I've never heard of Palmer. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they even say his name. They just call him the sheriff. So. I think that I, like I said, I think that this movie could have definitely used at least a second or third draft because the problem is I get what they were going for. They, I, I really do believe what they wanted to do was a nice throwback to 
the 80s slasher genre. The problem mm -hmm. is not only did it bring absolutely zero new to the table, but it also, like I said, it, the, the characters were just cardboard cutouts. That they were, they were empty suits. That's what like Paul always goes about. Paul from Indie Film right. Cafe. He always talks about how like writing is the cheapest thing that you could do. You know, mm. right? It does not cost any money to sit on your computer and write out the uh, right. like a draft of the script or whatever. Now, if you're getting paid, that's different. But like, I'm, I don't think mm -hmm. that happened with this one. So I think like the idea that a lot of and and you're you're an independent um you know actor and filmmaker, so you sort of know that probably like like working with J.R. Bookwalter, for example, when you worked with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of times he probably went by his first draft because he would write the movie right, and then he would go right into production as fast, and then they would try to fix any problems while they're on set. That when we were doing like the shot on video ones, mm -hmm. yeah, when, because we were on a deadline uh, with the uh, with um, uh, Cinema Home Video. But I mean, Dead Next Door had four drafts. Robot Ninja had two or three. Uh, uh, Ozone had two or three. It's like. There's no excuse. There, there's, there's no excuse. There, I, I'm sorry. There's unless you have, and you shouldn't. But unless you have something to where it's like, okay, well, we've signed this contract that you need to have this movie done right now. Then yeah, there's no reason not to do multiple drafts of the screenplay. Right. Absolutely. And so yeah, so you can just you know do this they, at any time. Been something really special. I, I think that there was enough uh, there was enough in there. I had think they had enough things at their disposal that this could have been something really interesting. And as it sits, the 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 worst part about I, I mean, again, I mentioned before, I didn't think the performances were bad, but you have to keep in mind the, the performances are just basically there because the characters aren't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to they have to make it make up for it because you know they have to make themselves stand out and everything. Right. The only character I I even know by can even remember by name is Lexi, mm -hmm. and that's because she's like said like they call her name like twenty thousand times mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, other than that, and, well, and like, there were a lot of plot points also that they started like attempting to develop and then just abandoned. Like what was the whole with the final girl the uh, her PTSD story? Mm -hmm. What was that about? Or what was the uh? Or why were they in uh wheelchairs? Yeah, exactly. Their their legs weren't broken. Yeah, you know, I, they, it looked really like I think I I think that scene was made when they go to the hospital and they say, "Hey, we got wheelchairs. Hey, let's put these guys in there." And yeah. then you know to make it look like you know they're they got hurt or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 no that's not how it works. You know, <laughs> like. You've been to a hospital? Yes, I'm sure you have. You know that usually you have to, your legs have to hurt, you know, or be hurt. Right. I don't think their legs had anything. There was no problems with their legs. Mm. Um, so I don't know. It was it was such a silly, but there was like lots of little issues with this movie, like like the beginning movie with the 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 two guys going out to get the firewood. Yeah, and then one of them just decides to dip out. Um, why would you continue then? You, I would be like, dude, if you're going to dip out, I'm not going to freaking carry all this wood. Right, exactly. you know, you're going to have to go tell somebody else to, to go do it then because, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Well, he leaves it out there so that he can get killed or whatever by the killer. And right. I guess it'd be, I, I don't even know which, which person it was in that particular situation. Or, or, it, or go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's just basically used as a plot device even though it doesn't make any sense. The other other bit was the father of the uh, is basically the um, what's it called when you're basically uh, supposed to be the one that they think is the killer, but it's really yeah. yeah. What, you're what the red herring, the red herring. So basically, the father, you know, who's yelling and he gets arrested, you know, for what did he do? I see. I didn't. I didn't get that either. I was going to ask you the same thing. Like, what did he do? He was like, he was just yelling about his son getting hurt and stuff. And he all he did is run to the to his son and everything. So, like, I think what they were trying to say is like they thought this guy was the killer. 
you know, and this guy's been the killer the whole time and, and all this stuff. But like, but even the ending was like that to where spoiler, um, when, uh, they, uh, uh, they, uh, they kill the killer in the pool, you know, uh, right. you know it's like, we never see, uh, what we see them getting ready to throw. What was it that they were throwing in, uh, uh, the boombox? The boombox. They get they're getting ready to they we see them throw it. We never see it under the water. We never see Of course not. Because that back. would actually cost money of actually having somebody be electrified in a pool. Like, yeah. you know, well, right? Let's be realistic here. They could throw in an unplugged boombox and have the actor just shake around. That would have been fine. Right. Yeah. But this type of film, it would have been acceptable. I think that was their ploy to make it seem like, well, you know, when we do uh, fi- uh, Final Summer Part Two. They didn't really die, you know. It's like well, uh, did, I'm gonna. I was gonna ask you. Did you watch to the end of the credits? I did. Yeah. The the whole. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> he's still. He's back. He's back. You know? Uh, you know, he's a search and rescue guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought, ah, you know, like I can't. I can't knock on this because, like, these are the movies I generally watch. Right. Slash, you know, slasher films. So, like. This is like a love letter to the slasher films. However, it becomes sort of this like, like they tried too many different things. Because okay, so the um the the father issue reminded me of Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Yeah, yeah, you with, know, right with the we, where we set up the uh, what was it, Roy. To be the new Jason. That's exactly what where, what they were going with with those. Yeah, right. So like it was basically giving me those vibes, and that's that's what they were. That's what they were. But that's about. that's what I mean by this doesn't bring anything new to the table. In fact, if anything, this is why it the the, the script needed a complete revamp because all they did was ape much better films. Right. It, was, it wasn't even a matter of paying homage anymore. It's like, hey, you know what? We're just going to go ahead. This worked here, so let's do it at a tenth of the budget. You know. Even even they they ripped off Friday the Thirteenth Part Three, where the guy's wearing the mask and then he puts the mask down and the killer picks up the mask and puts right. it on and now this is the new this is the mask that the guy killer's gonna wear or whatever which but like that is a cool mask like what? I get it I like it yeah um uh but I just hey also I did not buy that this guy that this teenager dude. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, you know, maybe he was in maybe he was in his twenties or whatever, but could could really do all of these kills with all this force and all this stuff. He looked like a whiny little baby. Well, that's again, that's the problem. Cool mask, horrible build. I yeah. know I know we're kind of spoiled nowadays with the whole hulking brute uh killer, you know, but I mean I mean, even with situations like Michael Myers. Where initially it was a rather, I mean, it was a rather average looking build, but you had the excuse then that, well, he's supernatural. Right. You know, with Freddy Krueger, it's like, yeah, he's he's got a thin frame, but he's a nightmare demon. You know, right. this, it's like, oh, he's just a teenager. Yeah. And, well, you look at, I think, you know, a lot of things like Scream. Scream, those are just teenagers, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. You know, later on in your other Scream movies, they become different people. Right. You know, or whatever. Um, and even then, if you really actually look into like Scream 2 or something, you're like, could could Lori Metcalf do half of that shit? Right. That, exactly. Like her character could really do now. But but those movies are so much fun mm. that even that you just let that go because and this you movie just didn't have the fun. I agree to disagree with you on that. What? You don't you have to dis- uh, agree to disagree with you on that. Oh. I movies you hate the screen movies i they, they're kind of what got me back into horror so i can never hate them yeah <laughs> you know i think we're i mean because uh you know we're different uh, different um timelines in our life like, oh, exactly. um uh paul hates scream paul's mm-hmm. probably more into your timeline right. let, let me ask you a question did you like chud too i did not no not when at you, all did, when you first went to see it were you mad because it had nothing to do with Chud. Furious. Yeah. Yes. That then then you're just like Paul because <laughs> Paul absolutely hated Chud too. Yeah. And, and it, I, me, had oh. never seen it mm. before. Thought it's the greatest zombie movie, even though I've seen Chud one. And I know it has nothing to do with Chud one. 
I think it's the greatest zombie movie, but it reminded me of like what zombies ate my neighbors. So <laughs> the video game. So mm -hmm. like it's my generation of like this was this was okay to me, you know. Um but uh but you and Paul have the same kind of thing. Scream he would hate because um it's just you know, people like to him it's like just girls getting killed and most of the time. I don't mind girls getting killed. My problem with Scream, and I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but my problem with Scream was I just felt it was a slap in the fan to the fans that made Wes Craven uh, who he is you know it's like he made a he made a career out of uh in horror and i it just seemed like it was kind of poking fun at the whole thing and i'm i'm all for parody don't get me or not even parody but i'm all for comedy it just i think the way it was i think it was brought about was wrong that's all okay, okay. so i'm 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 going to probably either you know either Whatever, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna say something that I think might make you go what? Mm -hmm. But uh, he also did Vampire in Brooklyn, right With before Dunk. them. Right yeah. before them. Yeah. Not just Dunk, but that was just a terrible movie. Well, like, I'll be honest with you. And I got into a lot of uh, a lot of flack about this a couple of months ago. I was never a Wes Craven fan. I just wasn't. I uh, I remember specifically that. I mean. I just don't feel that Wes Craven's films hold up to the, the uh, test of time like David Cronenberg or George Romero or John Carpenter. Even stuff like the original Nightmare on Elm Street just is really hokey, in my opinion, when you watch it now. Um, now, that being said, I'm not saying that he doesn't have his right, right place, but like growing up, I love The Hills Have Eyes. His, uh, his Hills Have Eyes. I thought yes. it was... And when they remade it, I was furious because it's like, I don't, this isn't a movie that needs to be remade. I don't want this, but I went to see it and I loved it. I love the remake and it made yeah, me. Aja, um, Aja, Alexander uh, Aja. Oh, love him. Aja. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, this makes me want to revisit the original Hills of Eyes. I hadn't seen it in a decade and I sat down with it and it's freaking boring. It's, it's awful. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I just don't feel his movies stand the test of time. I don't know. I saw it somewhat recently or whatever. I even owned the 4K, I believe, of it and everything. I from I think from uh, Screen Factory. Yeah. And I. Well, actually, no, the 4K on that would be Arrow. Arrow. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> Screen Factory and Arrow, they're competitors in right. the, the stuff I watch. Um. So yeah. No, I I got I've got the uh uh. Uh, arrow version i was thinking arrow first but then i was like wait didn't scream it sounds like something scream factory would get right um but anyway yeah so the arrow but i i didn't watch i haven't watched it i haven't watched the 4k version yet um it probably the 4k does is i mean it looks stunning they did a great job with it the problem is the movie just doesn't hold up it's just like last yeah. house i'll have to check it out again and let you know i, I mean i i saw it a while ago and i was like because i love d wallace and mm -hmm. um I got the Cujo 4K and from Kino and I, you know, I, I love, like, I'll watch anything with her and she's sweet too. I don't know if you've met her or not. She's a sweetheart. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, and so I will, I'll support that. Uh, and, and even if I don't, if it, even if it is sort of boring to me, cause I, I do have a short attention span. So, <laughs> um, you know, I have got ADHD up the wazoo. So yeah. like if, you know, like a movie like this did keep my attention, you know, uh, Final Summer kept my attention enough where I, I was like, because most of these movies, I just, because uh, like Scream, at, by the end, you know, while you start watching it, you just want to know who the killer is, right. You know, right? It's like the mystery of the killer. And then I'm like, but then this gives me like Scream 4 vibes where I watch Scream 4 and I'm like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> she's the killer? Like, she right, can, she can barely lift people in the air. Like, like I'm sorry, Emma Roberts, but you're. It, it and was... I can spoil that because that's long yeah. ago. Like you know, that's not one year old. Mm. But um, but yeah, uh, I'm like Emma Roberts. Like I don't know, I don't mm, unless her dad dad's been giving her uh you know protein bars every day <laughs> or whatever. I don't think she could really do what she you know. And and so I, I was like. But I, I, but I did like it was a, you know, female killer because they hadn't done that. Well, no, Lori Mecca. But what, you know, they, you know, you just look at that and you go, okay, it's a, you know, it's a bit different. 
and they're trying always to make it different. Mm. And I, I like, I'm, I'm, you know, you may not like Scream, but I'm excited for the new one that Kevin Williamson's going to direct, you mm. know, and everything. I'm, I'm glad he's back in the director's chair because I'm one of those people that actually liked teaching Mrs. Tingle. There was mm. a lot of people who hated probably. You weren't a fan if you've seen it. I'm a huge fan of Teaching Mrs. Tingle. It's out of print, and I sold my copy for a hundred bucks. I'm thrilled with this in Teaching Mrs. Tingle. <laughs> oh, you you're you're thrilled that you got a hundred bucks over it, or but you don't. But you're probably not a big fan not of the f- actual movie. No, no, I love it though. I Me think too, it's because great. um, I actually I I hate to keep crapping all over this movie. I I I I I, I want to say nicer things about it, but another problem that I had with Final Summer was the fact that you're basically making what I assume is a love letter to 80s slasher films. Would you agree with that? Yep. Why was this relatively bloodless? Because it was set in 1991. Oh, I see. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I just read it on the thing. It said in 1991. I'm like, yeah, I just think making an 80s thing. Like, did I they was, not have the costumes? Yeah. I was surprised how many kills in this were off screen. Let's put right. it that way. Yeah. No. Oh. Oh man, that pissed me off too. Because there, uh, you watched it on Tubi, I'm sure, yeah. right, and stuff. <laughs> so I don't know if this happened to you because I don't know what the like what it is like. But uh, for everybody, for everybody, it might be different. But when I watched it, uh, they would get the commercial, right? Yeah. And they would do the commercial right when the person's about to be attacked mm-hmm. and then they will come back and it'll be the next scene so i'm like wait what like i'm, I'm supposed to still see an attack like nope. what is going on nope nope they they pretty much did do everything off screen and i was like i mean i i get it like if you want to just make a movie and get it done and you're like oh we got this camp for you know for only like you know a week um right. we need to we need to rush and get this made. Let's shoot the script. Let's make this movie. Maybe that's maybe that's what it was, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they got Tom Matthews for that, but mm-hmm. you know, good job. Um, right. but yeah, I mean, it it was one of those things where I'm just like, after a while, I'm like shaking my head, going, "This should have been so much better." I agree. So, final verdict. What is your take on Final Summer? Oh, final verdict already. Oh, uh, I- there was I, I'm I'm out of notes, so it, <laughs> You're it, done. It, no, I mean the, there wasn't a whole lot to work with on this. I so. know there really wasn't. I mean, it's your standard slasher, you know. Girl, uh, I mean, if you had to describe it to somebody, you would say, you know, uh, camp is in peril. Uh, they're about to go out of business. The killer comes, tries to kill, knock everybody off, and then. <laughs> They find out who the killer is and then the final girl wins, you know, or whatever with some other two other people. <laughs> so one out of ten. What what do you uh ten being the best, what are you giving it? Oh, okay. We're not good. We're gonna do reverse stinkometer, I guess, right? Oh no, Cause... I'm sorry, I'm I'm not I completely forgot. No, let's do the stinkometer. Let's do the stinkometer. All right. Um stinkometer scale, one in ten, ten being stinky and bad. Um honestly I'd give it like a six, you know? Like I think... it's yeah, I, I was gonna I was gonna say a, a seven, but yeah, you're I'm probably being too harsh with it. I think a six is more than fair. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not terrible. It's not like the it's forgettable. We've seen worse, you know. Well, I guess that's the problem that I had with it is I almost wanted to see something bad in this to to give it something. Right. If this just is so completely forgettable that it's it's just it, it's it's bubble gum. It's I hate meh. to say. You know, yeah. um, and that, yeah, it's kind of a boring. Um, let me see real quick. Let me see what the uh, uh, what what some of the letterbox people said because those are those are fun. They're harsher than we are. Yeah, that's know? like I I always I always go there and I'm like, oh my god, these people are mean. Um, that, uh, are you going on IMDb or Letterbox? Uh, for uh, I'll go on Letterbox. You can go on IMDb. Okay, got it. All right. Um, reviews for Letterbox. Oh, okay. So there's this guy who gave my movie one star, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Scary Stories Lumber Party. He also gave this movie one star. So, hey, you know what? It, whatever, because there's <laughs> a couple couple movies I'm like, I liked. And then he gave one star and I'm like, then I don't I don't trust his opinion at all necessarily. But yeah, uh, well, 
now I'm curious. What's his uh, what's his name? Steven Milan. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, he, he blocked me on Facebook. Let's see. Because here. he trashed my movie, <laughs> I guess. Uh, this crowdfunded early. Oh, it was crowdfunded. I didn't even know that. Oh, uh, early 90s set indie slasher horror feature from director, writer, producer Joel, Joel Isberg, uh, Eisberg um, attempts to pay homage to 80 slasher cinema fair, but instead comes up with the paying homage to li instead. Wait, what? But instead comes up with paying homage to late 80s. I, he completely fucked up this review already. Uh, in the latter half of the 80s, when the slash and horror cinema was falling upon its knees, no thanks to uh, both post-Reagan administration era conservative parents groups who had uh, avidly protested theaters with, uh, with these films played at them and the Jack Valenti-led MPA. I, what are you talking about, man? Like, we're Ooh. laying waste to those beloved films. I don't... Can you, all right, let me get back to where he actually talks about the final summer has a local Illinois summer camp out to close down for a realtor sale as the film's camp counselors and its lead final girl, Chenna Cohn, are terrorized by a maniacal axe-wielding psychopath in a cloth skull mask who delights in leaving slain corpses everywhere. Final summer fails to thrill, chill, or hold any intrigue. At this film, uh, as this film is strictly the same familiar slasher cinema territory that everyone has seen millions of times before, only that the film contains flawed headed storytelling, lackluster performances from the cast, and a cardboarded helming as its only leaves final summer as one cinematic summer to truly avoid. Mm. The genre of name value stars Tom Matthews, blah, 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 uh, in, you know, yeah, so... That's pretty I'm, much his I, review. See, yeah, I'm I'm trying to find that review right now because yeah, review? I, it's pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same all through IMDb. Yeah, this they're not. Uh, they are not being kind to uh, Final Summer. I can tell you that. And let's see here. Well, it kind of sucks that that happens because I do get that. Like it. It took a lot of, uh, you know, it, it it took people's time and money and and whatnot, you know, like what movie? Make this thing. Yeah, Stephen, give uh, 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 did he not like of yours? He gave you one star. Yeah, so scary story slumber party gave one star, um, but I think he liked your uh, um, the one we did together. Um, oh, yeah, uh, I was, Brimstone you... Incorporated. Uh. I, you know it's kind of funny because he never mentions me of course because uh you know at all even though like he, not even to say like writer you oh, know okay. i know steven yeah okay i knew that i, I i'm horrible with names or i'm horrible with uh uh with uh with names uh well yeah it's two and a half stars for brimstone incorporated <laughs> oh okay well, you know not... but it's fair i mean he's he's being you know but he did say, let's see, what did he say about uh the one bit with uh that we did um for um our for our bit um uh let's see was also a really bad into a young man uh hold on shoot wow he kind of like okay a young man uh Tim Hale. With a domineering murderous mother, Sasha Graham meets her match with this latest girlfriend, uh, uh, Kaylee Williams, who displays hidden dark secrets of her very own. You know, he's telling all the different stories, you know, and everything. Does he say that he actually liked the one that we did, or no? Um, yeah. Person incorporated as a heart. I'm putting this into the Steve Milan show. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, we shouldn't do that. No, no, it's okay. If he's got you blocked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why he, uh, you know, why, why he so, cares that I'm, you know, like, like, why he would block me over, uh, over giving me a, a, a bad review. I don't give a fuck, <laughs> you know, um, people can, like, I was looking up Scary Story Slumber Party on line and there's two different places to find it on uh, YouTube. Right. So I checked <laughs> one of them out 
and like one of them said like there was a review of it where they go i think it was sort of good but it was sort you know but it was also sort of bad you know kind of thing like you know and i was like it, it was a weird review like you know a little little thing it was no review it was a little you know, thing but anyway Rimstone Incorporated is a heartful homage to Amicus film 60s and 70s horror anthologies that is superbly acted by the cast, sharply helmed by both Edwards and Twigs. So because you guys were the directors. Right. Uh, and features decent gory makeup effects and no nudity nor sex scenes with both Edwards and Twigs far more interested in the film's horror aspect. But at least the, the last five minutes and whatever um, could have needed some serious polishing up as it is an unfortunately stale cinematic cinema where nothing pr uh, practically happens. Otherwise, in Br Brimstone Incorporated is an okay film that has its moments and is strictly for fans of modern horror anthology. So he was a lot nicer, I guess, to you than than he was to me or this movie. Um, I I mean, you know, he, the, uh, he, uh, he my my thing is uh, even if, if he didn't care for Brimstone. Not only did he love Krista, but he also uh, contributed to the trivia and, and trivial Indiegogo. So well, he'll review it, and then he'll give his honest review of it. But then also at the end, say I contributed. You know, blah blah blah. To, you know, right? He does that. So I mean, I'll give him credit for that. But like, it's not like he's getting paid for these reviews. You know, like you know, he's just a fan who's writing these reviews. So at, at the end of the day. He's, you know, um, I'm not getting paid for this. I just do this for fun, you know, right? Like, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt, because if you, if this is, this could be somebody's favorite movie. Well, I know? can tell you this right now, okay? <clears throat> and again, uh, like I said, uh, uh, the, <clears throat> Stephen, uh, uh, Stephen loved Carista, didn't care for Brimstone, didn't like uh, Scary Stories. Right. Or, uh, uh, scary, scary story. Uh, Slumber uh, party. Yeah. That being said, <clears throat> um, I'm all. I, I mean, realistically, a I'm always thrilled to get people to watch my movie, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, and two, I mean, obviously, he's digging what we're doing. Otherwise, he wouldn't continue to contribute. Exactly. So and yeah, I'm all for it. I'm. I'm sorry that you had that. Uh, uh, I just I, like it's funny. It's like as if like what if he didn't like Krista? I wonder if he would have blocked you. You know because I, I like you know I I just don't know. But anyway, I don't know if he out to him. that's a constant thing or if that was a thing where he heard something about me and he just was like fuck this guy you know or whatever. I don't know. People talk shit all the time. That's just the way the world is. Come to indie film, you know yeah, the <laughs> indie film world, and it's fine. I, can I don't give a crap because uh, I'm, you know. I can promise you this. I am always appreciative of anyone that will check out my movies, mm -hmm. but I will never, ever, ever again take heart to a bad review. And I'll tell you why. With Krista, that was my bait. That was the movie that that, that was, that uh, to to date, that's the, the most personal film that I've made. Um, I took the reviews on that so hard because we got some really great reviews, but there I concentrated on the negative. Of course, that's what that's what all artists do. We don't we don't we look at the great reviews and it's a nice pat on the back. Right. But then the bad reviews make us go, um, you know, we suck because we have we're uh, what is, oh, egomaniacs with an inferiority I, complex. Oh, completely. But that being said, I was so concentrating on the negative. It led to it led to me going into the hospital. Oh, I ended God, up multiple strokes because of it. So I'll never ever take a negative review seriously again. Uh, bottom right. line, bottom line, I I'm always appreciative of my fan base. I'm thrilled that people like my stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm making movies for me. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right, and so and so, like to go back to this movie, you know, itself is like. Um, when when people go out and make a movie, like they finish the movie, it's done. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, uh, it may not be received well or whatever. However, the people that are reviewing it are you have usually watched the whole freaking thing, mm -hmm. which means that 
they must have been interested enough to see what happens to the rest of the movie. Because right. most most of the time, if somebody doesn't like something, they'll just shut it off. Right now on YouTube, when somebody watches some of the stuff, people just go trash or or whatever. Right when they watch the movie, um, those people, I don't even think they watch the whole movie. They just watch a few minutes of it and they're just like, this is not. This is not my kind of cup of tea. And you know what? It may not be your cup of tea, but, you know, then there's the other people who review it and they, you know, they say well, they're. Bottom line, I did not care for me personally. I did not care for Final Summer on the off chance that uh, John uh, Isberg sees this. I hope he does not give a care at all that I didn't care for Final Summer. Let's put it that way. I hope he like listens to the end of this thing and just understands we're not just we're not reviewing the movie in a like we're not trying to go in a negative sense of saying right. this was a bad movie or whatever. It's just that it was, you know, that the dude made his movie the mm -hmm. way he wanted to make it. I hope, you know, and if there's more to it, I would love to I'd love to get a Blu-ray or, or, or DVD or something at some point. And, and especially if there's a commentary track. Because I love to hear if there were problems that caused a lot of these issues that we watched, you know, a lot of the, mm. you know, the uh, maybe the the badness of the look of it and everything like I'll, that I'll at be, times. You are a better man than me. I wish John uh, Isberg the absolute best. I never want to see this movie again. So. <laughs> but would you watch another one of his movies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd watch another one of his movies. It's yeah. see, you're a lot more forgiving with indie film than I am, though. You it's something that you are very hardcore in. Where I'm noticing in my old age, I'm a lot less forgiving. You're the you're the uh, was it the comic book guy from Simpsons? I I, I, I consider myself more Grandpa Simpson, just yelling out the door and uh, screaming. Like, at leave me, you know, get off my lawn. Huh? Um, yeah. yeah, I I'm not like that. I I I yeah, but but. Uh, we are we are sort of different of like, yeah, you started in the indie world, like completely. Right. Mm. Like you were you you started on uh, a dead a dead next door and you worked your way up to doing different things. And, right. and you did that. And that was your, you know, and those movies, even though he, even you kind of say they're not the greatest, uh, the ones he, he made, you know, uh, share made later or whatever. Right. Um he, he, you know, those movies are classic cult movies, you know. I, people... uh, I still run into people that absolutely adore movies that I've done that I absolutely hate. Right. I, I can't imagine somebody liking Humanoids from Atlantis or Chick Boxer or something like that, but they're out there, you know. Yeah. Um, we do a whole show about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going through the JR, you know, uh, Rolodex. I mean, we did... Robot Ninja, I think last uh this last this season, you know, and stuff. So <laughs> we're gonna. I'm sure we'll get to humanoids, and we'll. I'm sure we'll get. Well, to I will Boxer. We'll apologize ahead of time when that you have to sit through humanoids. So. Uh, yeah. Well, or was it uh Kingdom of the Vampire? Or I was in that one. Yeah, I yeah, yeah that only one of the shot on video ones that I didn't do. And did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, I think it's the best of the six. W were you mad that you didn't? Uh... <laughs> Those where I was offered the lead role, and unfortunately, my family was out of town on vacation when they were going to shoot. Oh and I man! Down, and I severely regret it because of those six: uh, Zombie Cop, King of the Vampire, Maximum Impi Impact, Chick Boxer, Humanist from Atlantis, and Galaxy of the Dinosaur. It's the only watchable one of the six, and of course, it's the one that I'm not in. So, were you supposed to be in it? Yeah, I was supposed to be the, the lead. I was supposed to be oh, the, the Matthew Jason Walsh character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's funny. Because originally oh. it was going to be me, and when I couldn't do it, they went to John Kilo. And when John Kilo couldn't do it, they went to Matt Walsh. Because he wrote it, right? Or something. Yeah. yeah. I think he wrote the movie, so yeah. why not? Um, And uh, what is it? Uh, and then Brett Kelly remade it. Yep. You know? And everything. So, I mean, it's so funny when independent films like that get remade. Right. Because you know? I'm just like, like Hollywood's doing that, but like, do independent films need to be remade? Uh, you know. Then again, I was in Play Nine, the the remake right. to Play Nine from Outer Space. So I can't say anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and a lot of people are mad because they're like, "Why did that movie get remade?" And I'm like, "Why not?" Like, you, 
no matter uh, no matter what movie you do you will never get a universal you will never make a universally loved movie it just yeah. doesn't and i uh, you know you were saying like there were some bad reviews of of this movie on imdb and there's some bad ones on on letterbox and that kind of sucks but when you look at it like you know the horror the horror crowd especially indie horror crowd they are hard to oh, impress yeah. because we've we've seen it you know seen it all you know uh, like we, yeah, I, 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 we knew every it, reference that they did in this movie part of the, a part of the reason that i love uh horror specifically indie horror is it is the most the uh, the, the most ferocious the the uh, i mean the fans of the of horror in general are just so die hard we know what we like and we will let you know if we don't so, but on the flip side of that, if they love something, I mean, you, you they'll never, I mean, this is part of the reason why they don't have comedy film conventions or um, drama. Well, they have pop culture conventions, which they bring the comedy people into. Yeah, but that, let's be honest, the, the sci-fi and the horror crowd is what's bringing them in. So, yeah. And yeah, well, it's funny that you say that because there was a, uh, I went to meet Shalon Simmons. Now she was like. <laughs> The little girl on the bicycle and the original it you yeah. know and she was in uh final destination three and all the horror stuff and she had all her horror stuff but i was like hey uh you know do you have any pictures of you in la complex and that was like a drama mm -hmm. she was like no i didn't even think to bring that yeah. <laughs> and that's what i wanted because mm -hmm. next to her was lachlan monroe and i wanted his dead man on campus you know yeah. ones like i like i you know i like the ones that are a little bit more obscure than um you know than uh than the ones everybody else wants you know mm -hmm. but then again when she didn't have that i went and bought the uh her in the uh tanning bed in uh final destination not naked and she was in we didn't you know i i, I made it PG looking, you know, yeah. one, you know, but uh, anyway, um, well, uh, yeah, so final summer, uh, it was, it, it was, it was a slasher homage, um, it was done as well as I guess it could for, for whatever it did, and I just wish, I just wish it was better. Um, right. I'm here, but, I wish it brought something new to the table, or yeah. to bring some something new to the table, I wish there had been. What we all looked forward to uh, for the '80s uh, slasher films, and that was boobs or gore. So yeah, I didn't have any boobs, but no gore. Honestly, I, this is gonna sound bad. I kind of didn't really want to see everybody naked, like in this movie. <laughs> you you know, know, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not in a mean way. Like, I just I like just watching the movie, going. I just yeah. I'm mean, I, like I didn't even I didn't even think about the about titties. <laughs> Or 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 butts or or whatever. I just didn't. It just wasn't a thing that like I was even. I almost thought this was like more like PG thirteen. I mean, maybe that's what they were. That's what it felt like. That's definitely what it felt like. Maybe that's what they were going for. Um, they wanted something, or maybe that's what they did for sent for Tubi because Tubi's a little now. Sometimes they they are a little harsh on R rated movies for a separate uh, separate cut. So I'm assuming not, but. No, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a separate cut where there's a more, more gore, more you know, more stuff. But I don't know. I doubt it. Um. Well, uh, everybody, check out check out Final Summer if you want to. Like, if you're into slasher films and you wanna you wanna see something, um, he spoiled it. So I mean, I don't know why. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, then hopefully you've seen it. Um, right. And let us know what you guys think of the movie itself. Did you like it? I mean. Uh, the worst the worst parts are when I get the cast and crew that are like writing these you know comments like you were wrong about this and, right and stuff like that I'm like I mean I only see what I see you know and if, <laughs> if you know better than I do about it then then feel free to explain um, right you know uh hopefully John doesn't uh doesn't yell at us <laughs> we're not we're not he said and, my with that i i wish him nothing but the best yeah and like you said you'd watch another movie of his if uh yeah you know uh if you were asked to i guess or whatever <laughs> came up and you were like oh what's this movie and you just oh it's, it's john let me you know I'll, I'll watch another one you know like you're not gonna go oh man director final summer 
Right, right. Yep, that yeah. one. Um, that said, I am going to make you. Uh, I am going to make you watch one of mine next uh, next time. Yeah, <laughs> the one that. So, like the last time that you had me do it, it was like when you when you had already like picked out or yeah. something like that. You were going to movies watch. that I'm just getting ready to watch. So it worked. Yeah, out. you have like a whole like list, right, of right. things like. Uh, and I really, what I did was just. I guess you found ones that you gave me a list of ones that are are on Tubi, I guess, or whatever. Right. And we did Killers Delight. That's the one. Yeah. That was pretty bad. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't it, the greatest. I, I sold it after we we watched it. <laughs> you talked about that because you were like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna keep this." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I mean, I might. Uh, I wouldn't have bought it from from you because yeah. I would try to find like the least cheapest, right? Thing, <laughs> you know, and I think you're gonna try to sell it for. Oh yeah, yeah. As I gotta make as you can possibly <laughs> get. <laughs> I mean, no offense, man, but it does. There's going to be, I bet somebody, you said you sold this. So yeah, it sold within the week, so I was happy. Oh, yeah, that's good. Jonathan, that's... thank you so much for having me on again. I appreciate yeah. it. And like I said, uh, let me know when you want me back. I, I'm always happy to come on. Definitely. All Please. right, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Check, uh, check it out next, uh, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow for a brand new episode. Until then, everybody, have a good one. Take Bye. care.